Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, last week we took some time to check out AMD's newly refreshed Radeon RX 6650 XT. Short story, they took the existing 6600 XT, overclocked the cores by about 2%, the memory by 9%, and this resulted in an average performance boost of about 6%. And for that, they increased the price by 5%. The end result being an extremely underwhelming release, and if your comments are anything to go by, it didn't do much for AMD's brand reputation. Frankly, I think they should have just stuck with the same MSRP, because as it stands, you're still best off buying a 6600 XT, and just overclocking that if you want those few extra frames, though most models are overclocked for around a 5% performance boost anyway. Now, along with the 6650 XT, we also got the 6750 XT and 6950 XT refreshes, and today, we're going to take a look at the 6750 XT. This is another pretty straightforward affair. The 6750 XT features a core overclock of 19 megahertz. That's not 19%, 19 megahertz. So a 0.7% increase there, but you are now getting faster 18 gigabits per second memory. So a 12.5% boost to the memory bandwidth. So other than a 9% increase in board power, that's it. Oh, actually wait, no, that's not quite it you're also faced with having to pay 15% more as the MSRP has been jacked up from $480 US to $550 US. So quite a deal there. Of course, we'll analyze just how much of a deal the 6750 XT is in our cost per frame segment towards the end of the video. Now on hand for testing, I have the MSI Gaming X Trio and Sapphire Nitro Plus models. And I've got to say both are excellent. I've also got to say, I'm starting to feel a bit sorry for AMD and NVIDIA's partners. It's not their fault that these TI and 50 series refreshes have been a complete and utter snooze fest. Still, they're making bank, so I guess some harsh words from me on the GPUs they contain will be water off a duck's back. That said, these Sapphire and MSI cards are both very good, and I'll show you some thermal numbers shortly. For now, let's check out the frame rate performance to see if the Radeon RX 6750 XT has any surprises for us. All AMD and NVIDIA GPUs have been tested at the official clock specification, so no factory overclocking, and all data in this video is fresh and was gathered in the past week using the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with 32GB of dual rank dual channel DDR4 3200CL14 memory on the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Extreme motherboard using the latest BIOS supporting a GSA 1207 microcode. In total, I've tested 11 games at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, though due to the boring nature of this data, I'm only going to look at the data for five of the games individually before getting into the 11 game average results and the cost per frame analysis. All graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into the data. Starting with Rainbow Six Extraction, we see that the 6700 XT and RTX 3060 Ti are very evenly matched here, which is a good result for AMD in the current climate, given the 6700 XT is a much cheaper product. Based on the current Newegg pricing, the 6700 XT is down at $490 US, while the 3060 Ti is $590 US. The 6750 XT is expected to settle in at about $570, at least based on the current pricing, which would place it very close to the 3060 Ti in terms of pricing. And in this example, it's 8% faster. So I suppose a good result there for AMD. When compared to the RTX 3070, it is just 2% slower, but we estimate it's around 19% cheaper right now. So again, a great result for AMD in the current market. All of that said though, it is just 7% faster than the 6700 XT. So that 15% bump in price is a bit rough. Frankly, you'd be best off just overclocking the 6700 XT, which is basically all AMD's done. The GeForce GPUs do fare better at 1440p, and here the 6750 XT is only able to match the RTX 3060 Ti, making the RTX 3070 13% faster. Perhaps most disappointing of all though, is the fact that the refresh is just 4% faster than the 6700 XT here. Then at 4K, the margins change again. The 6750 XT is now 8% faster than the 6700 XT, which I feel is probably going to be a best case scenario for this refresh. Again, it matched the RTX 3060 Ti, this time making it 5% slower than the RTX 3070. Next, we have Watch Dogs Legion, and the 6750 XT is very impressive here relative to the GeForce competition, though rather underwhelming it has to be said when compared to the 6700 XT as it was just 4% faster. So a bad result compared to what it's refreshing, but great compared to the RTX 3070 as it was 22% faster. 
That margin was reduced at 1440p, but still, the 6750 XT was 13% faster than the RTX 3070, which is an excellent result for AMD, given how much cheaper their GPU is. Of course, paying 15% more for the 6750 XT over the 6700 XT is a bit rough, given in this example it was just 5% faster. As we've come to expect, NVIDIA's AMP architecture is much better leveraged at 4K, whereas the opposite is true for RDNA 2, which becomes more bandwidth constrained, let's say. As a result, the RTX 3070 is now able to match the 6750 XT, or edge it out by a single frame in this example. The 6750 XT was also just 6% faster than the 6700 XT. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we find that at 1080p, the 6750 XT was good for 139 FPS, making it just 7% faster than the 6700 XT for what basically amounts to RTX 3070 like performance. Then at 1440p, the new refresh card pulled out to a 9% margin over the 6700 XT, and that allowed it to stick with the RTX 3070, which, as I've mentioned previously, given the current pricing, that is a good result for AMD. Then as we move to 4K, the RTX 3070 is able to pull ahead, as here the 6750 XT trails by a 5% margin, and now it is on par with the RTX 3060 Ti, and just 8% faster than the original 6700 XT. The Outer Worlds has been added to our Day 1 Review Games list, as this title better balances out what is now the 11 game sample to more closely represent the margins seen between competing AMD and NVIDIA products across our massive 50 game tests. Like many Unreal Engine 4 titles, this one favours GeForce GPUs, and we see this here as even the RTX 3060 Ti is faster than the 6750 XT, which was just 7% faster than the original 6700 XT. Then moving to 1440p, this further favours the GeForce GPUs, and now the 6750 XT is seen to be 6% slower than the RTX 3060 Ti, and 14% slower than the RTX 3070. Meanwhile, it was just 7% faster than the 6700 XT, so exactly what we've come to expect, very minuscule gains. Then at 4K, the GeForce GPUs pulled away further, and now the 6750 XT is 7% slower than the RTX 3060 Ti, and a whopping 18% slower than the RTX 3070. Unfortunately, the faster GDDR6 memory didn't help much here, as we're seeing just a 4% boost over the 6700 XT. And I think at this point we've pretty well worked out the 6750 XT, if we hadn't already with a quick glance at the spec sheet. So I'll wrap this one up by testing with F1 2021, at 1080p the 6750 XT was just 5% slower than the RTX 3070, and then 7% faster than the 6700 XT and RTX 3060 Ti. Then at 1440p it was 7% slower than the RTX 3070, 3% faster than the RTX 3060 Ti, and 9% faster than the 6700 XT. The 4K results are a bit of a blowout, and now even the RTX 3060 Ti is a good bit faster than the 6750 XT, while the RTX 3070 is 20% faster. Meanwhile, the 6750 XT was just 5% faster than the original version. Moving on for a quick look at total power consumption, we see that the 6700 XT pushed total usage to 336 watts, meaning the 6750 XT increased system consumption by 13%, which is very significant given the single digit performance gains just seen. Though this result isn't surprising as AMD are overclocking the 6750 XT beyond its efficiency window. Still, when compared to the RTX 3060 Ti and RTX 3070, power usage for the 6750 XT is reasonable. So performance wise, the Radeon RX 6750 XT looked okay compared to the RTX 3060 Ti and 3070 across the few games that we just looked at, but it wasn't exactly exciting sitting next to the 6700 XT. Anyway, to get a good idea of how they stack up, let's look at the 11 game average before moving into our cost per frame analysis. Starting with the 1080p 11 game average data, the 6750 XT comes out 6% 6 faster than the 6700 XT, so again, very disappointing given it is 15% more expensive. Inserted into a graph, the result on its own looks very good though, as it's a little faster than the much more expensive RTX 3070, and only slightly slower than the RTX 3072, which is even more expensive again. That said, the 6700 XT is obviously better value given the MSRPs, but it's also better value given that you can just overclock it yourself for 6750 XT levels of performance. Increasing the resolution to 1440p sees the 6750 XT and RTX 3070 neck and neck, but again, the refresh model is just 5% faster than the original version, which is a hugely disappointing result. Then at 4K, the 6750 XT was just 6% 6 faster than the 6700 XT, and that meant it was just 6% slower than the RTX 3070. 
Now, I skipped over the MSRP comparison, our 6650 XT review, as the MSRP has meant quite literally nothing for well over a year now. But some of you are interested in these unicorn prices, so I've whipped up a graph for the 6750 XT review, and here it is. So if this generation of GPUs were to sell at the MSRP, there would be some interesting matchups. Firstly, the RTX 3060 Ti would be the bee's knees for value shoppers, coming in at a cost of just $4.54 per frame, according to our 11 game data, making it 17% cheaper than the 6600 XT and 13% cheaper than the 6700 XT. But at the higher end of the market, the RX 6800 and 6800 XT would have looked quite good with the 6800 XT coming in at a 12% discount per frame when compared to the RTX 3080. Anyway, none of these prices were valid, at least for the masses, but they're worth showing and do pay attention to what we've seen here because the MSRP versus reality is quite an interesting comparison. Looking at typical prices seen over at Newegg right now, so about four days before this video is scheduled to be published due to some exciting FSR 2.0 content, which hopefully you've already watched, we see the Radeon GPUs largely occupying the top of the graph, with the GeForce GPUs mostly taking up the bottom half. So quite a stark contrast to what we saw when using the MSRP. Of the GPUs compared in this video, the 6700 XT is the standout, costing just $5.32 per frame, making it a massive 21% cheaper than the RTX 3060 Ti and 26% cheaper than the RTX 3070. And that's a massive cost saving right there. Sadly though, the 6750 XT sends AMD backwards a bit, increasing the cost per frame by 10%, which is quite a substantial increase. Still, as much as we're unhappy about it, it does mean AMD is still well out in front in terms of value when compared to the Nvidia competition. For example, the 6750 XT is 12% cheaper per frame when compared to the RTX 3060 Ti and 19% cheaper than the RTX 3070. And we feel anything over 10% makes the Radeon GPUs a viable option in the face of much weaker ray tracing performance and less mature upscaling technology. Now let's move on to take a look at cooling performance of the Sapphire and MSI models we have on hand, and I'll start with the MSI 6750XT Gaming X Trio. This triple fan model peaked at just 66 degrees with a fan speed of 1350 RPM, making it a very cool and quiet model. The cores typically clocked at 2680 MHz, so overall a good result here from MSI. That said, the Sapphire 6750XT Nitro Plus is slightly better, dropping the peak temperature to 63 degrees with a fan speed of 1250 RPM. So slightly lower fan speed there for a three degree reduction in temperature. And on top of that, the cores averaged a higher clock frequency of 2720 megahertz. The Nitro Plus also features a dual bias, which in my opinion is a must have item on a $300 plus graphics card. And sadly, MSI doesn't offer this with the Gaming X Trio, which is a bit baffling to me. So personally, I'd go with the Nitro Plus, but if unavailable on your region or the price premium is just too high, the Gaming X Trio is still an excellent product and well worth considering. Okay, so let's start with the positives. The MSI and Sapphire graphics cards performed really well. The MSI Gaming X Trio is slightly cheaper than the Sapphire Nitro Plus, but it's not quite as good. Though I doubt you'll be able to tell the difference between the two. As I said, they're both very good. Uh, I think they both look great. So it's really going to come down to which one you prefer the look of, and probably more importantly, the pricing and availability in your region. Partner models aside though, the Radeon RX 6750 XT as a product is very underwhelming next to what AMD already had in the market. Though I admit, I'm a little torn on this one. Well, sort of. From the perspective of a reviewer, where I work for the viewer and the viewer only, this is a very crappy refresh. We're getting an overclock 6700 XT for a 15% premium at the time when really, if anything, it should be 15% cheaper. AMD fans will of course shout about stuff like inflation, a point to increase shipping costs and so on. And yeah, we're all aware of those things. Our point though being, if you can't improve the products you already have out in the market, don't do anything. Going backwards isn't a good look, and it's not how you win gamers over to the Radeon brand. But most importantly, from my perspective, the perspective of someone who places the consumer's interests first and foremost, this offers you nothing. It just serves to take more money away from you while really giving you nothing in return. Certainly nothing you couldn't have achieved yourself previously with a 6700 XT and a little OC know-how. So I think from the perspective of the consumer, there's really no positive way to spin this release. 
From AMD's perspective though, it's very obvious why they're doing this. Even with the 15% price hike, the 6750 XT is still much better value than competing NVIDIA GPUs in the current market, with NVIDIA still able to easily outsell AMD. So they might as well increase profit margins as it's unlikely to deter sales further. AMD also assures us that the 6700 XT supply won't be affected, and those models will continue to sell as they were, meaning they're just giving gamers more options with the 6750 XT. So if that is indeed true, then as underwhelming as the refresh is, it's very much a non-issue. Having said that though, I'm not sure I believe AMD when they say 6700 XTs will continue to exist and sell at a lower price. It doesn't really make sense for them to do that, and it makes the 6750 XT even more pointless. But I guess we'll see in time how that plays out. As it stands, the 6750 XT at $570 is a much better deal than the RTX 3070 at $700, probably a better deal than even the RTX 3060 Ti at $590, depending on where you stand on ray tracing. Personally, I care very little about ray tracing at these performance tiers, but I'll leave that one for you to decide, as it is very much a personal preference. Of course, I don't even recommend you consider the 6750 XT at $570 US, as the 6700 XT at $490 is a far better deal in my opinion, and a much better deal than even the RTX 3060. And that is gonna do it for this review. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. You can also subscribe for more content. I will be looking, for those of you who have been asking, and a lot of you have been asking, the 6950 XT, that review will be coming up shortly, probably a few days from now, uh, but we are working on that one. And I do have the MSI and Sapphire Nitro Plus Pure cards to look at there. The Pure in particular is quite an impressive looking graphics card, so keen to check those out. Uh, regular stuff if you want to become a harbor unbox community member then float plane patreon links to those in the video description you get access to our monthly live stream tim and i get together and do that that will be coming up i think next week we'll be getting together to do that so that'll be fun we'll probably talk a bit about this release and other things exclusive discord chat so we have a harbor unbox discord server for members q a's behind the scenes content a lot of cool stuff there so if you're interested check it out if not perfectly fine i would like to thank you for watching this video i'm your host steve and i'll see you again next time